In today's module, we will be studying different functions of management by different authors. But before underlining the different functions, it is important to know some rules regarding the functions of management. One, that there is no universally accepted list of functions of management. And many theorists have identified same or similar functions with different names. For example, Henry Fayol, he has identified the following five functions. One, that is planning. Second is organizing. Third is commanding. Fourth, coordinating. And fifth is controlling. Now, it is also known as POCCC in short. Now, let's understand the different functions of management given by Luther Gallick. Now, he coined the word POSTCORB for the eight functions, which is as follows. Planning, organizing, staffing, D stands for directing, C stands for coordinating, O stands for organizing, R stands for reporting, and eighth, stands, eighth one is budgeting. So, POSTCORB. Now, these eight functions are considered to be the major functions of management and widely used functions of management. Now, let's see the different functions of management given by Coons and Odenel. <clears throat> they have given the following five functions, which is planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Now, First, let's understand what exactly is planning. Let's see the five different uh, functions of management in a little bit more detail. So planning is basically determining the future course of action, what exactly we will be doing in future. Now, it can be of the long term, that is of more than five years, or planning can be short term, that is of less than five years. Now, how does a manager plan? Now, there is a procedure through which a manager does his, his planning. Now, the first thing is establishing of objectives. Before doing any planning, it is very important to understand what are the different objectives or why the planning is required. What are the different achieve, uh, achievable goals that for which we need to plan? So, first step is establishing of objectives. Then, we develop the strategies through which we can achieve those objectives. After which, we establish different policies. Now, policies are the framework under which the objectives need to be established. Then, we develop a program for accomplishing those objectives. After which, we also establish our schedule and budgets. Now, schedule is the time frame within which the objectives need to be fulfilled and budget is the resources the amount or money that require that will be required to accomplish that objective after establishing the schedules and budgets we establish our procedures by which we will be doing our different planning procedures now after establishing of procedures we identify the potential problems what are the problems that could occur during the course of achieving our objectives once we identify the potential problems, we develop preventive or contingent action plan. Now, how can we overcome these potential problems? We need to study that as well. After that, we coordinate throughout our planning process. And finally, we need to determine the planning premises under which the planning will be done. So this is the basic planning process. Second, function of management is organizing. Now, as you can see in this picture, in the first part of the picture, we can see a big fish and it is trying to eat the small fishes because the small fishes are not organized. So, the big fish is more powerful. And in the second picture, you can see that as the smaller fish organize themselves, they were able to overcome or threaten the bigger fish. So, it is important to organize even in an organization. So, basically the process of organizing is dividing work into convenient tasks 
or duties. It involves grouping of different duties in the form of position in an organization. We have different functions to be performed. So it is important to group those duties and give it in the name of a position. For example, the clerical position has to perform certain set of duties. The managerial position has to perform certain set of duties. And let's say the board of director has to perform certain set of duties. So it is it involves organizing involves grouping of duties in the form of position. And then we also group various positions into the form of departments. Now these departments can be marketing department, these departments can be finance department, HR department and so on. So we group various positions into departments and we also assign duties to individual positions. And then we also delegate authority to each position. Now if we, give, we are giving some responsibility, it is important to also give them the authority. So this is all included in organizing your work. The next function is staffing. Staffing is all about getting right people for the right job. It includes preparing inventory of personnel available, who all are working in the organization, what all uh, things they are doing in an organization. It is important to understand what is the job role of each individual who is available in the organization. And once we identify that these are the manpower or personnel that we already have, we also need to identify the gap between the manpower required and manpower available. If we do not have sufficient manpower, it is important to identify that gap. Once we identify the gap, it is also important to identify the sources from where people will be selected, from where we will be getting more manpower which is required for the organization. After the sources are identified, it is also important or a part of staffing function to select people which are important and right for the right job in the organization. After selection, the process does not end here. It is also important and a part of staffing to train and develop these individuals which will help in accomplishing the organizational goals. And also it is important to fix their financial compensation and to appraise them periodically to keep them motivated and to keep them with the organization. So these all things come under the function of staffing. The next function is directing. Now directing involves leader and its subordinates. So it is a process of instructing, guiding and inspiring human factors in the organization to achieve organization objectives. The superior manager, he needs to communicate to subordinates about their expected behavior. They also need to guide them, to lead them and to motivate them to perform better. Thus, directing includes communicating, motivating and leading by the superior to its subordinates, which is also a very important function of management. Next is controlling. Now controlling is a circular process which involves setting up of standards, measuring the performances, comparing performances and taking corrective action and then again setting standards. So basically controlling it ensures that things are going as they should according to the plan. It involves identification of actual results, what were the results achieved by the organization, then we need to compare it with the expected results which were set during the planning process when we decided the objectives, when we decided this is what we want to achieve. So what were the expected results and what exactly were our results, actual results. And if there is any deviation from the actual and the expected results, then we need to identify that as well and we need to take corrective actions in case of any deviations. Now this is the process of controlling. Now there are some other management functions given by different authors which may be combined with these functions or which may be a separate function completely. So these management functions are commanding, decision making, innovating, communicating, investigating, appraising, evaluating, coordinating, leading and finally motivating. Now, if you enjoyed this video, 
then please like and share thanks for watching